Hello students, we're going to do activity four in the Concord Consortium unit called What Will Earth Look Like in 500 Million Years? Earth is a complicated surface made up of eight major plates, 10 minor plates, and dozens of microplates. In activity one, you saw GPS data in indicating that the Earth's plates are moving in different directions at different speeds, and we can see some of that here. This video is an animation of the shapes and locations of Earth plates over the past 200 million years. Continents are shown as shades of yellow, orange, and red. The black lines indicate the outlines of the tectonic plates. Purple lines show the locations of long-term convergent boundaries where plates move towards each other. Take some time to observe how the plates move over time and how the individual plates shift directions, grow, and shrink. And you can watch that video again on your own. Something must be causing these plates to move. If a plate is moving, there must be a force or forces that make it move. In this activity, you'll investigate the processes that cause plate motion. What do you think might be causing the Earth's plates to move? Do you have any evidence to support this idea? What might be causing the Earth's plates to move? Here's a Cadbury egg. And a Cadbury egg is a chocolate shell and has like a gooey middle here. And you can see if I crack the chocolate, the gooey middle starts coming out. And if I got the inside really hot, that gooey middle might start kind of rising a bit because hot uh, materials usually are less dense and rise. Or gravity might start pulling part of this chocolate plate into the egg like that. So there are some ideas for you to write your first question one answer. How are plates moving? In the Tectonic Explorer model, you can see the new plate material being formed at divergent boundaries and old plate material moving back into the mantle at a convergent boundary. In sum, is there some connection between plate boundaries and the forces driving plate movement? Tectonic Explorer model below is set with a cross section. When you start the model, you'll see at the center of each plate on the globe is labeled with a number. Let's go check this out here. Um, there is a number right here. That's three. There's a number right here. That's four. And there's a number right here, that's five. So there's three plates lined up, three, four, five, kind of um, at the equator of this planet right now. We have a cross section. Um, right here from this part of the planet. And we can see a, uh, a couple different kinds of boundaries. So we're gonna run the model and see what's going on with these boundaries. It's already set up with the cross section for us, so we don't have to draw a cross section. What does it look like's happening here in terms of plates? That remember there's three plates in, um, and now it looks like the number of plates has changed. Let's go look. There's three and there's five but four has disappeared. So take a snapshot of Tectonic Explorer that includes the cross section and you can label it ABC. You also need to put on arrows that show, and I didn't do it completely here, so you have to finish it, um, which way those plates are moving. And you'll have to take your own snapshots here and set it up yourselves so that you have the correct view. 
Earth has layers, the solid rigid surface layer. Where we live is called the crust. It's kind of like the chocolate on the outside of the Cadbury egg. The crust lies on top of the mantle. The mantle is solid but less rigid than the crust and can slowly flow. The mantle flows and moves in response to heating from within in the planet. If you've ever poured honey, you understand flow. Honey, if it's cool, uh, does not just pour like water. You have to kind of wait around for it to get out of the jar. The motion of the mantle is slow and at every given moment it appears solid, but over millions of years, the seemingly solid material does move and pulls the crust along with it. Now, of course, the mantle moves a lot slower than honey. Think of the mantle as being silly putty or clay, see the pictures below. When you pull quickly on a piece, it can break, but if you pull in a long, sustained way, it can stretch. The movement of the mantle rock happens through a pro process called convection. You may know something about convection from how it works with air and water, but it may seem strange to think of rock moving in convection patterns. However, rock does move in the mantle with hot rock rising upwards and a result, cooler rock getting pushed down deeper into the mantle. Let's look at this uh, model here. So you can see the blue cooler rock kind of flows downward and then it starts to get hot. So the blue starts to get hot, kind of moves to the side. It's once it's kind of turned and then it turns yellow because it's hotter Then the hot rock is less dense. So it rises. Then it gets to the surface of the earth where it's cools, it falls down again. And so it's constantly, the mantle is constantly cycling as it cools and heats. The core of the earth is radioactive, so it's always, well, in our lifetimes anyway, is going to remain very hot. Um, it's going to be millions of years before the planet cools down. It started out very hot when it formed and it's still cooling. One way that scientists visualize convection in the mantle is by creating computer simulations like the one below. Earth is represented by a large blue sphere. A wedge has been cut away to show the inside of the Earth, the mantle, and the convection going on there. The red center represents the core, which is heat, uh, the source of heat energy. Um, we talked about how the model works. What plate boundary would you expect to see where there is warm mantle um, when the warm mantle rock, the less dense mantle rock, reaches the bottom side of the crust. So think about the upward flow and then it kind of parting out. Or think of like water boiling, bubbles come up and push out. Now they're not bubbles, but it's a good analogy for you to think about in your own everyday experience. What plate boundary type would you expect to see where the cooling mantle rock, blue color, sinks back towards the Earth's core? Well, if you're converging and if you're sinking, you're going down. And what's happening to the plates when they go down? You can come up with your own answer there. The image below shows a cross section that extends deeper into the layer below the crust. So here's um, uh, a piece of crust going into the mantle. The green is the, uh, the green layer is the solid mantle. The red color shows magma, the only liquid rock in the picture rising to the surface. The crust, a solid rigid layer lies on top of the mantle. The continental crust is colored brown and the oceanic crust is blue. And this is water, this light blue. Take a snapshot in the image. I did not draw the directions that the plates are moving. Um, you need to draw an arrows to show how you think the mantle is moving underneath the plates. And lot more arrows are better. You can put um, directions on different parts of the plates. Um, there's basically three plates in play, but um, parts of the plates are doing different things like this plate might be moving in a slightly different direction than this part of that same plate. So think about how different plates, different edges of the same plate might be heading in slightly different directions.
Explain how plate movement at the surface is connected to mantle movement below the surface. So here's the mantle. It's cool. It has cooled and is kind of sinking down here. And if something is sinking down, what's it doing to the other part? Think about my sweater sleeve here. If my hand is the plate and it's sinking down, what's happening to my sweater sleeve? Is it getting pulled along? Is this edge getting pulled as the, along as this edge sinks? Convection and plate movement. The plates that cover the Earth's surface are continually moving. The movement creates all of Earth's landforms, mountains, trenches, mid-ocean ridges, and results in a pattern of events, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. Which ca what causes the plates to move? Part of the answer is the convection found in the Earth's mantle just below the surface. As you know, Earth's plates move in different directions. The direction of movement is determined by the direction of flow of the convection currents in the mantle below the plates, which create different types of plate boundaries as plates are either pulled away from each other. So uh, hot stuff is moving up and pulling things away or cold stuff is moving down and pulling cross together. You can do your own hand motions to help you remember. Convergent, cold, <clears throat> uh, divergent, hot. Now that you understand some more convection and plate boundaries, let's return to Seismic Explorer to look at those boundaries with convection in mind. Plate boundary lines are shown in yellow, blue, and pink colors. Um, let's look just to make, remind ourselves. Yellow is convergent, pink is transform, where the plates are just rubbing against each other, and divergent is in this sort of teal green color. Which part of the mantle convection process is likely to be occurring at the boundary between the Somali plate and the Australian plate? Well, uh, let's label the plates here, plate names here, turn those on. So we're looking for the Australian plate and the Somali plate. And right here, this is a divergent boundary. I know from the color of the line, you can check it in the key. So if it's divergent, what's happening? What's rising? Which part of the mantle convection process is likely to be occurring at the boundary between the Nazca plate and the South American plate? Here's the Nazca. Here's the South American. Here's that boundary. It's yellow, which means it's convergent. So convergent, cold, sinking. You get cold on top and you sink down. Explain how plate boundaries are connected to the slow movement of solid rock in the mantle. Well, you can just explain what you're doing with your hands. Cold plates sink, and that's convergent plates. Hot mantle, this is slightly less dense, so it rises and pushes parts, diverges plates. So use diverge, use converge, use cold, use the word hot, use the word sink, use the word rise. And if you can use all those six words, you've probably got a pretty good explanation. This is not the answer. Put those words in a sentence or two. As scientists gather more data and evidence, they continue to improve their explanations of how the world works. Scientists have known for a long time that convection in the mantle is one of those forces that moves plates, but it's only one of the processes that scientists think is responsible for explaining how plates move. Gravity also has an effect on the movement of plates. Two processes scientists call slab pull and ridge push 
use gravitational forces and work with the mantle convection to move plates. The video below will help you understand scientists' new ideas about how plates move. We'll watch just part of this video, um, kind of introducing some new ideas. It's not just convection that moves plates. A gravity-driven convection, gravity -driven system convection system that pushes young that pushes hot plates young away, hot from, plates spreading away from spreading ridges and pulls old and cold, cold plates down. Cold plates so you can see the, the little people here. The blue people represent cold plates that gravity is um, pulling in back into the mantle. Old, cold, down. Uh, this is hot, less dense, and it's rising to fill in the space between plates that are moving apart because of uh, one edge of the plate being pulled down. So here the video explains a little bit more of a modern explanation for seafloor spreading. Just not just convection, but... At a spreading ridge, the ocean depth is only about 3,000 meters. Ocean depth increases with age of the underlying plate, so that where the plate is more than 80 million years old, the overlying ocean increases to 5,500 meters deep. Let's examine the formation of new oceanic plate and how that plate cools with age. As hot mantle rock rises to lower pressure, a small portion of this upwelling asthenosphere melts to form magma that builds the seven kilometer thick oceanic crust at the edges of two diverging plates along the ridge axis. Beneath the crust at the spreading ridge, there is only a thin layer of lithospheric mantle because it is unusually hot in the upwelling zone. This hot and therefore lower density mantle rock supports the 2,500 meter elevation of the spreading ridge. As the plate slowly moves away from the ridge, it cools by conducting heat through the crust to the cold ocean water above. At the same time, the underlying asthenosphere cools and adds to the bottom of the lithospheric plate. Thus, although the crust maintains its thickness during migration away from the ridge, the lithospheric plate thickens and cools to create ocean basins that extend five kilometers in depth. A simple way to think about elevation is that the plate is young, hot, and high at the spreading ridge and becomes old, cold, and low during the aging and cooling process. So that's a, a good thing to remember as we talk about. In the middle of seafloor spreading, it's young, hot, and high because the less dense rock rises and the old, cold plate um, gets sucked down into the mantle. So you can watch the rest of the video and I highly recommend it. You can do that on your own time. At which type of boundary does ridge push occur? Well, this is ridge push. The asthenosphere is pushing that ridge apart. Slab pull, remember the little blue guys um, uh, pretend uh, down in the uh, mantle pulling on that um, piece of Uh, rock that was sinking. There we go. There it is. So this is um, what they call ridge pull. Now there obviously are not small blue people or large blue people as it would be pulling rock underneath the mantle. It's just there to remind you that that is um, slab pull. Gravity is pulling the old cold plate down into the mantle again. So the old cold plate is more dense, so it gets pulled down in, into the mantle. And this newer plate, as it cools, starts to um, get heavier or more dense. Um, and so it uh, eases away from the boundary. Now, gravity isn't the only force here, but um, we are giving gra gravity more credit. Um, and uh, it's working together with convection to move those plates. All right, done with four. When you're done, make sure you go to show all answers. And we, you should see this sign there. 
You'll click that, you'll see options, you'll see save as PDF, save it as a PDF, then click Notability, and you can hand it in that way. Thanks so much. I'll see you in Activity 5.